If you're alive and well in church, let me say that amen. If you're alive and well, let me say that amen. amen. So what did expect that and say for the biggest miracle this morning? Wave your hand. Let me say thank you, Jesus. Uh, I'd like you to and greet your neighbor. Tell your neighbor today is your day. Would you put your hands together for the Almighty and place him in the center? What a good God we serve. Everything multiplies by thanksgiving. Everything. Everything multiplies by thanksgiving. Everything suffers reduction in the absence of thanksgiving. If you will not lay it to heart to return glory unto my name, I will cause your blessing. Malachi chapter 2. Malachi chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. He said, This commandment is for you, O ye priests. If you will not lay to heart to return glory to my name, see the Lord of hosts. He said, I will cause your blessing. He said, Yea, I have caused them already. People who are thanksgiver walk in abundance of multiplication. Nothing ever gets reduced in the hand of a thanksgiver. Nothing. Everything dies in the hand of anyone that is not grateful. Everything. 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 Your life is a blessing. Your life is such a wonderful one. But the life you are not grateful for can multiply. We can bring down the rest. The life you are not grateful for, you can keep. God preserves. He said, if you will not hear and if you will not lay it to heart to give glory to my name, see the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse on you and I will curse your blessing. He said, Yea, I have cursed them already. Can I pray for someone? Your blessings will not be cursed. Uh, your image is not sounding like you're in church. Your blessings will not be cursed. Every good thing around your life will never suffer reduction. Let your may be alive and clear. Amen. This morning, I had the scripture in my spirit, and I want to read it to us. Saphaniah chapter 3, and verse 17. Saphaniah, if you get that scripture, Saphaniah is actually in the, in the Old Testament. Saphaniah chapter 3, and verse 17. Saphaniah 3 and verse 17. Can we be very fast if you get that scripture? It's not in my notes. I just had God said, Everything multiply in Thanksgiving. Your challenges does not matter if you can actually. Saphaniah chapter 3 and verse 17. 17. Saphaniah. 17. I'll read with me if you're a Christian. I don't like this background anyway. He said, the Lord your God in the middle... I want King James. I want King James. Let's, let's stick to King James. He said, the Lord in your God in the midst of you is mighty. He said, mighty to save. Are we there? Are we there? Use King James. Use King James. You can keep this background. Let's do service. Let's not... Uh, we can be correcting this later. Let's stick to one. So that we can concentrate. King James. Now read with me if you are a Christian. He said, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. What will he do? He will save. He will rejoice over thee with joy. He will rest in his love. And he will joy over thee with what? With singing. With singing. The Lord God, one thing that provoke the presence of God in our midst to do mighty things in singing. The Lord in the midst of thee is mighty. Mighty to save. He will rejoice over you with joy. You will rest in his love. He will joy over thee with singing. People who sing to God, God will rejoice over them. People who murmur to God, God takes his hand of them. Dryness is synonymous to ingratitude in this kingdom. Dryness is synonymous to what? Ingratitude. Yeah. 
Dryness is synonymous to ingratitude. Dryness is synonymous to ingratitude. He will join over you with singing. People who actually sing unto the Lord with a heart of gratitude is a guarantee over them that God will rejoice over them. May God rejoice over you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Say thank you, Jesus. All right. Let's go into our study for today. We are still going to have some minutes to praise God before we go. Psalm 115 and verse 6 is our scripture for the month. Psalm 115 and verse 6 is our scripture for the month. 150 verse 6. Don't forget I said we are dedicating this whole month to give God thanks and to actually praise God. Why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? He said, let everything, yeah, this is beautiful. He said, let everything that has what? Bread. Praise the Lord. How many of us has bread in the service this morning? Let me say hallelujah. How many of us are grateful for life? Wave your hands. Let me shout hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 103, and verse 1. Psalm 103, and verse 1. Psalm 103. We are dedicating the whole of this month. Why? For thanksgiving and to praise God. Why are we doing that? He said, let everything that has bread, praise God. And as long as we have the bread of God in us, we are to praise him. We are to what? Praise him. We are to what? Praise him. Now, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. All right. Psalm 103 and verse 1. He said, he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. All that. Remember that scripture we read first? He said, Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Now, Psalm 103 and verse 1 said, He said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. This could not that you are still alive, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Why are we going to do that? At least. Psalm 150 and verse 6 said, everything that has breath, praise God. And this psalm is also repeating the same thing. He said, let everything that also has breath, pray, because all that is within you is meant to actually bless his holy name. Why? For a reason. No, verse 2 now. For a reason. Verse 2. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefit. Never forget that the benefit of God around your life. Never forget that there are benefits of God in your life. Never forget that there are benefits of God in all. There are benefits of God in this church. I know without any doubt. We are people helped by God. I know it. Running an end time ministry is much more demanding without sufficiency or some few things. But we have still afloat a few things. For some of you who are running businesses who understand organizational principles, have an idea what I'm talking about. Let everything that has breath, praise God. They said, forget not his benefit, the benefit of God. Now, let's read the few benefits in verse 3 now. Let's read a few benefits in verse 3. Verse 3. He said, read with me if you are a Christian. Who forgive all what? Your iniquities. Who heal all? Oh, I told you before when I was treating the topic here. I, oh dear, oh dear. Who forgive all your iniquities? I've told you most often than none that iniquity is actually sin that is worked out. God forgives sin, the breaking of the law. But can I tell you something? Iniquity is actually sin that is worked out. When your heart begins to actually work out sin, consider fornication for instance, you need to actually plan fornication before it happens. You pick a location. You have to actually arrange with the person. You have already have conceived in your heart. You already have conceived in your heart that this is what I'm about to go and do. You now make an... Do you understand what I'm saying? That's actually, that's actually sin worked out. And that is iniquity. You want to defraud somebody now, for instance, you will have calculated. As a matter of fact, if you want to lie to people, you already have masterminded some evil to calculate that to lie. Say, the way I'm looking, if I give it this way, if you come this way, I give this way. I give this way. Iniquity. And this is why the Bible said this, despite the fact that we work out things that is actually contrary to the law of God, God is still merciful enough to forgive our iniquity. 
No matter the state we find ourselves, no matter the state of mastermind evil and the case study that we actually have found ourselves, if you can for, if you can come to God with a heart of repentance, God will forgive. And if God can forgive iniquity, one thing, look at this. There is a connection between iniquity and sickness. I said it here some times ago when I was talking about and I was talking about how cancer comes, how stroke comes. Some of you now begin to agree with me right now. Look at this. There is a connection between iniquity and what? And sickness. There are, there are sickness that are actually sponsored because of iniquity. But the good news is this. The Bible said, who forgive all your iniquities and heal all. If God forgive all, he can heal all. Forgiving all is what? Healing all. So it may thank you, Jesus. If God forgives all iniquity, he can heal all diseases. And this is one of the benefits we need to give God thanks for. And this is why he said, all that is within me, all that is within me, bless his holy name, who forgives all your iniquities and heal all your diseases. Move to the next verse. Verse 3. He said, verse 4, sorry. Verse 4. Who re- read you if you are Christian? Who redeemed thy life from what? From destruction. Who crowned thee with loving kindness and what? And tender mercies. Who redeemed your life from destruction? There are many destructions planned against us that have never come to pass. There are many destructions spoken over us that have never come to pass. There are many destructions planned against us that have never come to pass. If the arrow that fly by day and the arrow that fly by night and the wickedness that reign by new day, by the noon, if it actually come around us, our life will have been destroyed. But God kept us. God protected us. He delivered us from the hand of evil and wickedness. And what did he do? He moved further by crowning us. When God actually keeps your life away from destruction, he guarantees something. That he places upon you his tender mercy and his love. God is not keeping us safe simply because we qualify. No. God is keeping us safe. Why? Because of his loving kindness and tender mercies. Masamataka. Le croque brodi. Someone, someone, we'll come back to this scripture. Can you go to someone 42 for me on verse 3? Someone 42 and verse 3. We'll come back to this scripture. Who redeemed their life from destruction? Someone 42 and verse 3. No, go to 143 and verse 2, sorry. 143 and verse 2. 143 and verse 2. Apologies to that. Now, read this thing via Christian. This is what I'm looking for. He said, Enter not into judgment with thy servant, for in thy sight no man living is what? Read via Christian. Read. One, two, read. If God decides to enter judgment with all of us, there is no man living that. No, I no this is not to promote... This is not to promote a heart of wickedness. This is not to promote a system of... This is not to promote a system of not doing things well. But can I tell you this? If not for the love... And this is why the Bible says, He granted us with His loving kindness and with His tender mercy. Why? Because if God entered judgment with us, no man living can be justified. This is not to actually capitalize on our sin. For some of us who are actually in sin and we will feel that we should continue. No. If God enter judgment with us, who will stand? Enter not into judgment with us, for in thy sight no man living can be justified. And this is why he crowned us with his loving kindness and his what? His tender mercies. Now move to Psalm 103 verse 5 now. Let's complete that scripture. Did you see the reason why we are praising God? Did you see the reason why we are praising God all through this month now? Is somebody getting an understanding now? Now let's move further. Now read it. Read if you are a Christian. Want to read? He said, Who satisfied thy mouth with what good things? So that thy youth is renewed like a nigga. Who satisfy what you speak determines what is in your life. Can I say this again? 
What you speak determines what is in your what? When your mouth is satisfied with good things, your life is... When your mouth is satisfied with good things, your life is renewed like a nigga. When your mouth is satisfied with good things, and why did how did God satisfy our mouth with good things? He has given us his promises and his covenant in scriptures that when we speak, that's why the Bible says, Let the weak say, let the rich, let the poor say. Let the weak say. You see this? He satisfy our mouth with good things so that our life can keep getting renewed. Our life can keep getting renewed. When you are not actually speaking what is right, your life can be renewed. But God has made provision for us in scripture. And this is why we need to bless his holy name all through this month. We know what to say when evil situations come. We have an authority in the name of Jesus to actually be able to silence every oppression of the devil. Can I say amen to this? You renew, you satisfy our mouth with good things so that our life, so that our youth, so that our strength is renewed like that of the ego. Say with me, thank you, Jesus. How many of you want to bless God this morning? Say thank you, Jesus. Did you see the reason why we are giving God thanks this all through this month? Let me say this. Thanksgiving and praise remain one of the potent weapons in the school of communicating with God. Thanksgiving remain one of the potent weapons in the school of communicating with God. Thanksgiving remains one of the potent weapons in the school of communicating with God. Thanksgiving remain one of the potent weapons in the school of communicating with God. Thanksgiving remain one of the potent weapons, one of the potent weapons in the school of communicating with God. When we are when, oh ha ha, Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6, Philippians 4 and verse 6, verse 6 to 7, Thanksgiving remain one of the potent weapons in the school of communicating with God. Thanksgiving remain one of the potent weapons in the school of communicating with God. If you will communicate to God aright, Thanksgiving is a weapon. If you will communicate with God aright, Thanksgiving is actually a weapon. You can ignore Thanksgiving and have all your prayers answered. Thanksgiver, nothing dies in the hand of a Thanksgiver. Everything multiplies in the hands of a Thanksgiver. Now look at what the scripture said. He said, he said, be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with what? You are not reading very Christian. He said, be careful for what? Nothing. He said, but in everything, by what? Prayer and what? And supplication with what? Thanksgiving come last. Thanksgiving come last. The equation will never be balanced if all that you do is to pray, if all that you do is to supplicate, if Thanksgiving is lacking in it, I can guarantee you, you will not get the answer. Be careful for nothing. The scripture said, he said, be anxious for nothing. And that translation said, be anxious for nothing. And that translation said, do not actually have anxiety to fill your heart over any situation of your life, but put it in prayers, supplicate, and let thanksgiving not be missing in it. God will come true. We are prayed in January. We are prayed in February. We are prayed all through the year. Will it not be wisdom to dedicate a month to actually thank God? Because thanksgiving might actually be the missing link to the reign of the blessing that we are looking for. I know that God always reserves the best for the last. This is the last month of this year. There is a best that is about to come forth in your life. That's why the Bible said that thou planted the year with his goodness and all your parts deep with abundance. Can I guarantee you something? If you to learn the principle of scripture, you can actually master all seasons. You can master all seasons. We are prayed. We are supplicated. Why not let's go into thanksgiving even as a church? And then nothing dies in our hand. God validating the scripture. He said, be careful for nothing. But in everything, he said, by prayer and supplication, he said, with thanksgiving, he said, make your request known unto God. So that means, if thanksgiving is not even in the question of your prayer, your request is not registered in heaven. If thanksgiving is missing from the question, your request is not even known by God. You want to go to God. Oh God, give me. Oh God, you don't understand. File is expensive. You don't understand. Life is hard. You don't understand. Oh God, answer now. He like, do now. Do now. No, no. 
Your request will not even be registered in the department that answers prayer in heaven. When thanksgiving is far, you just woke up in the morning. Look at the Lord's prayer. He gave us a vivid example of how prayer should be done. Look at that. He said, he said, our father, who art in what? He didn't start by saying, give us this day our daily bread. He, start, he didn't start with a request. He started with actually eulogizing God. He said, our father, who art in what? Hello be thy... Read, read the Lord's prayer if you are in church. He said, our father... As it is in heaven, give us this day. Did you see where request comes in? Our Father who art in heaven, we have actually worshipped God. We have actually adored His holy name. And we have actually called down the kingdom of God to come. That is actually interceding for souls and establishment. And after you have done that, you can now say, give us this day our daily bread. Your prayer will not be answered, or no, your prayer will actually be registered in heaven if thanksgiving is, a, is, a, if thanksgiving is not there, it will not be registered. Move to the next verse of this scripture, verse 7. He said, and after you have prayed, after you have made your request, no, no, to God by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving, when you have made your request, no, no, to God, look at what will happen. He said, and the peace of God, which pass all understanding, shall keep your heart and mind, I can keep your heart and mind, through what? This is one thing I love about thanksgiving and praise. If you know how to thank God and praise God, where well, you can create solutions that you don't know. Things will be working in your court. He has done for me, he has done for me what my father cannot do. He has done for me. I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you, Lord. I will praise you, Lord. There's this there's this one song I love so much. That even if he has issues, the only thing he looks for is to look for how to is to look for how to praise God. I will praise, I will say. Lift my hands to honor you because your word is true. I will say, if you look at that song from the beginning, he said, Lord, you seem so far away, Lord, million miles up more, you seem today. I haven't lost my faith, I must confess right now, but it's hard for me to pray because I don't know what to say <laughs> and I don't know how. He said, but as you give the grace with orders in my heart, I will sing. I will praise, say, lift my hands to honor you, because your word is true. You know why? In the place where you look as if nothing is working, the best thing to do is to sing. Because God always rejoices over the one that sings. He said he will joy over you with singing. And I see you mentioned this. Look at this. The peace of God. Have you, been, have you been in a situation where you don't even know what to do anymore? You know, the best thing to do is learn to worship. Learn to praise. What are you thanking God for? I don't know. Will God come true? Yes. Why? Because God will never reject. God will never reject. You see, our prayers can be rejected. Because the Bible says we pray amiss. Are we together? But there is no way in scripture where God rejects thanksgiving. That's why he said, out of the mouth of babes and suckling, he has ordained what? Praise. So God does not in any way reject praise. God does not in any way reject thanksgiving. He can come from the mouth of anyone. You see, you can actually, you need to pray. If you want to pray, you need technicality in prayers. There's a lot of technicality involved in prayers. There is a lot of technicality involved in prayers. That's why the fact that there's a lot of technicality involved in prayers, you can still be praying and yet not get answer. The prayer that is born out of greed will not be answered. I wrote, I wrote something some days ago, sometimes last week, and then somebody criticized me on Facebook. I said, if you are not praying with the right motives, you can interact with unclean spirit. And it's true. The moment you stop praying with the right motives, you can interact with unclean spirit. A heart that is coming out of greed and wickedness, the prayer that is born out of wickedness, who, is, who are you interacting with? That's why Psalm 101 and verse 7 said, said, Psalm 101 and verse 7, can we check that scripture? Look at what Psalm 101 and verse 7 said, talking about the protocol of his presence. Talking about the protocol of his presence. 
This is why out of the mouth of babes and suckling he has ordained what? Praise. Look at this. Psalm 1, 1 and verse 7 said, He said, He that walketh deceit shall not what? Dwell within my what? House. He that tests life shall not continue. Shall not continue. Can a liar, if a liar is praying, who is he interacting with? If a liar is praying, what kind of a prayer is a liar supposed to be praying? A prayer of repentance. I'm sorry, Lord, I repent. I'm sorry, Lord. When a liar is actually praying, which spirit is he interacting with? Because if, if somebody that is doing deceit, somebody who do deceit to live and is praying, who is he interacting with? You're doing yahoo yahoo. All of those schemes and gamings and then you do things that are not actually in line with the will of God. Who are you interacting with in prayer? Who? Who are you interacting with? As long as your motive is not clear, your heart is not right, and deliberately intentional with the heart of evil going to God, who do you think you are interacting with? And then you go and pray in that manner, and then you lift your voice, and then you begin to hear some kind of voices. You are the Elijah of this generation. Who do you think you are interacting with? Who doesn't speak that way? Elijah has come and gone. When motive is not clear, did you see that the protocol of answer prayer is even deep? This is what I'm trying to paint here. The protocol of answer prayer is deep. But when it comes to the protocol of praise and thanksgiving, can I tell you this? You only need the right heart to do it. Once your heart is right, there are no protocols involved. Out of the mouth of babes and suckling, I have ordained praise. Every child can say, thank you, Jesus, and yet God will hear. Just the right heart. And this is why we are giving God thanks all through this month. Do we see that in the life of Jesus? Yes. Did Jesus ever actually give thanks in everything? Yes. In, Ma- in John chapter 11 and verse 41. John 11 41. In John chapter 11 and verse 41. John chapter 11 and verse 41. Thank you, Jesus. John 11 and verse 41. John 11 and verse 41. Read me if you're a Christian. He said, And then, then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. Talking about Lazarus. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said what? Father, I thank thee for thou what? Did you see this? When Jesus got to the tomb of Lazarus, what did Jesus do? Jesus did not actually come. Because as at that time prayer can fail, you need to raise the dead that's actually been dead for four days. By this time, the Bible recorded that he's already stinking. And that they needed an intervention. And instead of Jesus to start kabashing and ca- casting down the spirit of the dead that has actually gone for what did he do? He said, Father, I thank you. For thou hearest me what? One of the greatest weapons in this kingdom to command answers to prayer is thanksgiving. God will never turn his back against anyone who will learn the principle with the right heart to give God thanks. He will not do it. Say with me, thank you, Jesus. No, you are not saying it loud and clear. Say thank you, Jesus. If you are in church, say thank you, Jesus. In John chapter 6 and verse 11, we saw that Jesus multiplied, fed 5,000 5, people. That's minus, that's minus women and children. And then we saw that with five loaves and three fishes, as the case might be, he began to give them and then they began to eat. Why? By thanksgiving. That's why you know nothing dies in the hand of one who knows how to give God thanks. Alright. I'm going to tell you this. Just seven things I will run through it and then we'll be upstanding to dance for like about seven minutes before we go. Can I say when? Because he will rejoice over us with what? With singing. Seven benefits of praise and thanksgiving. Number one, seven benefits of praise and thanksgiving. Number one, number one, you command the presence of God. Pay attention to that word. You what? You command the presence of God. Benefit of thanksgiving. Seven benefits of thanksgiving. Number one, you command the presence of God. Commanding the presence of God, meaning you can actually determine the flow of his presence to you. Can I say amen? Psalm 22, verse 3. 
Psalm 22, verse 3. You command the presence. You command the presence. You command the presence of God. Think about this. God is not our slave that we can boss around. But we can get, we can, we can put it in his integrity to confirm when we do our own part of the deal. Read with me a Christian. He said, but thou art holy, O thou inhabit the praises of what? Of Israel. If you can look under translation of this scripture, I want under translation of this scripture. He said, but thou art holy. Now, thank you. Thank you. This is beautiful. He said, yet you are enthroned as the holy one. You are the holy one of Israel. Look under that translation. Maybe amplify. But that's your AKJV. I've not seen that translation before anyway. Alright, let's see this. He said, but you are holy. Oh, you that inhabit the praises. Look at this. There's a translation that said, you that dwells in the praise. Meaning, anywhere the praise of God is found, God dwells there. So you can command the presence of God to come to you. How? By praising God. How will I exalt you, Lord? Father, you have lifted me above my enemy. Your banner over me is love. How will it up your name? How will it up your How will it up your name? How will it, hey, how will it up your name? Above it. As you continue in that regard, you command the presence of God. You command the presence of God. I said it here before. I've done someone away from barrenness before. It's been long I did that. But sometimes, maybe because I lack some of the privacy I, lo- I want now. But most times, if I really want to praise God and the thing enter me, I remove all my dress. I will only talk. You see, I will look like a madman dancing alone in the room. But you know what? You can't deny the effect. I've danced for 18 days over a matter before. And the matter was solved. That matter looked as if it's impossible and close. The person was to die. But I stood in that. I wasn't praying. I wasn't asking for anything. I was just dancing over that one person. I met a sister from Lokoja some years ago. Zachala the Gala person, I remember. I remember her name now. She said, it, has, it's, 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 it looks as if it's impossible for me to get married and then this has happened, this has happened. I said, when do you want to get married? Give me a date. And she gave me the date. I said, pick a sheet of paper. Write all the name, write all the features you want in the man. She wrote it. I said, place it down in your house. Every day, seven, seven minutes, just be dancing around it. Seven, seven minutes. Seven, seven minutes. The last time I had from her, she has about two children and she's staying in Karo. She's staying in Karo. The protocol to answer prayer, you might miss it. But there's no protocol to praise in God. And this is why you can command the presence of God. He inhabits the praises. Anywhere God found praise, God comes down. Anywhere God sees praise, God does what? God comes down. Number two. Praise. Light your spirit. Praise what? Praise light your what? Psalm 42, Psalm 42 and verse 4 to 6. Psalm 42 and verse 4 to 6. Praise, lighten your, lift your spirit. That is, take away your body. Light your spirit. Psalm 42 verse 6, right? 4 to 6, thank you. He said, when I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I have gone... For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God. With the voice of joy and praise. Are you seeing that attention? And with a multitude that kept holy day. Move to verse 5. Why had that cast down, O oh my soul? When your soul are, you, are you reading this? He said, why has thou cast down, O oh what? O oh my soul. Why has that disquieted, why has that disquieted in me? Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him for the help of his what? Of his countenance. Move to the next verse, verse 6 now. He said, oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Amorite and from the hill of Misha. Go back to verse 4. 
Go back to verse 4. The problem was found in verse 5 and verse 6. But the remedy was found in verse 4. He said, but when I remember all these things, I pour out my soul. I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God with the voice of joy and what? And praise. Thanksgiving is depression. This is what the Bible says here. Lighting, nothing lighten your spirit like praise. When things... When things get to me, I turn it to thanksgiving. Oh, how do I scale through this challenge? I will exalt you, Lord. Father has lifted me. And most times, how many of you have actually been worshipping God sincerely, genuinely, and you are praising God and you find yourself crying? You know what movie to that realm? Sometimes there are deep thoughts that are difficult to communicate. Nothing yields thanksgiving. So nothing yields depression. Nothing lighten your spirit like thanksgiving and praise. Nothing. Our spirit, you know, let me tell you, like something came to me. I just want to stick to my note. The spirit we have is actually in alignment with the spirit of God. Whatever pleases God, Helps our spirit. There is no one that thank God that can command the presence of God in thanksgiving and in praises that the spirit will be depressed. The trouble will be there, but you be, you be but you be lighted. Thanksgiving lights our like our spirit. Number three, praises increases your knowledge of God. Increases your what? Increases your knowledge of God. How many of you want to go deeper in the knowledge of the things of the kingdom? How many of you, let me see your hand here. How many of you want to go, want to know God more? Raise up your hand, let me see. How many of you really want to know God more? You know what? One of the ways to know God more is to learn to praise God well. In your praises, your worship to God. And you see, the choir should not have a problem in that. I expect an average choir to turn devotion to worship. Wake up in the morning and then let a song be the first thing that proceeds from your mouth. You will carry and command His presence at will. In fact, you sing a song and then you move into the realm and blast in tongues a little, sing a little. What are you asking for? I'm just thanking God. You command the presence of God at will. Increases our knowledge of God. Psalm 69. Psalm 69 and verse 30. Increases. Increases our knowledge of God. 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 Increases. He said, read with me if you are a Christian. I will praise the name of God with a song. And we magnify him with what? Thanksgiving. Move. Can, can I get another translation of this scripture? Maybe NIV. Or, yes, can I get NIV or maybe Amplify? I wrote I, I Amplify here. Amplify says something different. He actually portrays this scripture. Well, look at the NIV. He said, I will praise God's name in song. Glorify him in what? In thanksgiving. In thanksgiving. Move. Can you get another translation? Because the word magnify and glorify talks about having to have increase. You can magnify who you do not know. You can glorify who you are ignorant of. How do you magnify somebody you don't know? How do you glorify someone you don't know? It increases our perception and our knowledge of God. All right, move to. Okay, do you have another translation? All right, okay. This one talking about magnify. It talks about increasing our perception in thanksgiving. You know, the more you thank God and praise God, the more increase of the knowledge of God you have in that regard. Because God will begin to show you things. I wish there is time, but I'm going somewhere. It increases your perception and increases your knowledge of God. Number four now. Number four. Thank you, Jesus. 
Number four. Praise creates solution you can see. Yeah. Psalm 149. He, he creates solution. Present Thanksgiving creates solution you could not see. Psalm 149 and verse 1. Can we quickly go there? Psalm 149 and verse 1. There are praises. <laughs> there are solutions. There are problems that you don't know the root where it come from. But there are but there are solutions in God also. That needs to be demystif- that needs to demystify the things you don't know. So praise remains a mystery that creates solution you can see, but yet you will feel the effect. It's a praise ye the Lord. Sing unto the Lord a new song, and his praise in the congregation of the saints. Move to the next verse. If it can be very fast. Move to the next verse. He said, Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Move to the next verse. Let them praise his name in the dance. Let them sing praises unto him with what? With timbrel and harp. Move to the next verse. For the Lord taketh pleasure in his people and will beautify the meek with salvation. Move to the next verse. Let the saint of God be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud upon their beds. Move to the next verse. Let the high praise of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. How are you going to be praising God and there's two swords in your hand? How many Praises create a so, praises, praises create solution that you cannot see. How are you praising God? And in the realm of the spirit, there are two there are two edged sword in your hand. How? How? Praises create solution we cannot see. In a realm where you praise God, there are solutions that God fought that you might not be able to express, but you can feel the effect. You can feel the effect. Look at look at the next verse. When that two, when, when, let the high praise of God be in their mouth. When high praise is actually in our mouth, in the realm of the spirit, there are two edges sword in our hand. And in the realm of the spirit, something begins to happen. He said to execute vengeance upon the hidden and punishment upon the people. Move to the next verse. I think verse 9 is actually the last verse. He said to execute vengeance. He said to execute upon them the judgment that is written. He said this honor have all the saints. We have this honor in God that if we can make our praise go high to God. It doesn't matter the situation behind us. We can create. We can create solution that we cannot say. Oh, they have said you will not get married. You might not know who said so. Something is fighting them in the family. You might not know who did it. But you can create a solution in the realm of the spirit with a two-edged sword in your hand. With a two-edged sword in your hand. And you are executing one of the ways to execute vengeance upon people oppressing you is actually to sing high praise. Yeah. You will not know how God will deal with them. But in the realm of the spirit, when the praise is high, there are two-edged sword in your hand. And vengeance is going to come upon the hidden. And the Bible says there is actually a judgment that is written that will come upon them. Why? Because of high praise. How do you connect high praise to judgment? How? So praise creates solution we can see. Oh, my job is not doing well. It's not to complain about it. How many of you have actually seen to work before? How many of you have actually looked at that area of business and that's what you sing about? Oh, this business might not be doing like you just turn it to praise. Things might not be going well as you think. There's a judgment that will come upon whatever it is that is working against. Can I just say, man? Say thank you, Jesus. Oh dear Jesus. All right, number four now, right? Number what are we now? Number five. Don't worry. Sister Faith will do a recap of all that we have done today. So that in case some of you miss it, she will do some money. I'll give the time. Number five. Praise helps to keep us in remembrance of God's blessings. Nothing keep you in check. Like Psalm 103 that we read, he said, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not his benefit. Who forgives all your what? Praise. Praise helps to keep us in remembrance of what? Of God's what? God's blessings. The more you praise God, the more you are conscious of his blessings. 
and the better sustenance you get. How many of you know that this life we are living is not our own? Yeah. It came from God and it will return to God. The body will return to dust. The spirit will fly. So when we give God thanks, we sustain the life. I've never seen somebody who knows how to praise God well that die young. Yeah. 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 Number six, because of time. Praise guarantee God's protection. Praise guarantee God's what? Second Chronicles twenty twenty. God set a bushment against the enemy of his people. Second Chronicles twenty twenty. You can check that when you are home. Number seven, because of time, and I'll stop here. Praise guarantee open door. Praise guarantee what? How many of you look as if doors, there are some doors that are not open to you since January. You can still open it. So it can still be open. Psalm 67 and verse 5. Okay, let, let's read Psalm 24. Verse 1. Let's start from Psalm 24. Psalm 24. Praise guarantee what? Open doors. Praise guarantee open doors. You see, some of you that are not jotting, always come, always come to church with the writing material. You cannot get all of these things at once. And that's why you go back home and then check the things you have studied. Can I say, man? Praise guarantee open doors. You know why I have a tab? All the messages I've preached this year is on my tab. Not even the one I listen to, the one I read. If you don't have the attitude of craving to know, you will be easily oppressed. You can read your way out of anything. And that's why anything stated in church, like I went for a meeting, and all that meeting, I have it in one. I have it in one, that if I want to read all that I got from that meeting, I can just open my tab, just on one day, I began to read. It can be more than seven to ten pages, I can't remember now. What I read. So that all that is discussed there still stay with me. The word of God won't stay with you if you don't have a culture of keeping it. That's why the Bible says Satan can come to steal it away. Can I say amen? So always learn to judge in church. Are we together? I don't only judge the things that are taught, go back again and read them. Because that's what we do. Go back again and read them. Go back again and read them. Let me tell you this. How many of us has asked some jottings from January to now? Do you have like this? Maybe you jot something in church. Oh, good. Do you have like this? You know what? Some of the solution you are looking for now is already jotted in those daughters. It's because you don't read it. The key is, you know something? There is nothing a believer is looking for that is not always around. And that's why you don't need plenty of consultations to get anything. You only need to be properly lighted. Can I say amen? All right. Let's continue now. All right. I said, praise does what? The last one now. Guarantee what? Now let's read this. He said, the heart is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Now this is a medium of praise. Reminding God, the heart is your own. And everything that is in it is still your own. Move to the next verse. He said, and he has founded it upon the sea and established upon the world, upon the flood. The psalmist here yeah, reading to God a system of praise. Move to the next verse. Who we are sending to the hills of the Lord? Who shall stand in the in, in his holy place? Move to the next verse. He that has a clean hands and a pure heart, who has not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn what deceitfully. Don't swear deceitfully, oh. No swear deceitfully. You can go to the holy place of God. You know why doors are closed with many. Why doors are closed against many of us? Pay attention to this scripture. Pay attention. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. Move to the next verse. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O God. So one of the ways to actually seek God is actually in praise and in thanksgiving. And then in this realm, what will happen? Move to the next verse. 
Read, read with me if you are a Christian. If you are following this scripture from the beginning, read this one now, you understand. He said, Lift up your head, O ye gate, and be lifted, O ye everlasting door, and the king of glory shall walk. Before you begin to knock the door to actually command an open door, make sure you have a pure heart, you have not sworn deceitfully. Do you understand what I'm saying? I begin to praise God. This is a qualification. Now you cannot look at the door that looks as if it's closed and say, Lift up your head, O ye gate, and be lifted, O ye everlasting door. I know we come in. You have already, the meaning is that you are already carrying a king that is full of glory. If your heart is pure, you are not swearing deceitfully and you are praising God. You already sustain the presence of God of the king of glory. That when you look at any door that is shut against you, you can say, lift up your head, O ye gate, and be lifted, O ye everlasting door. And the king of glory is coming. There is no door you want to open that will not ask you. No door in this kingdom open on its own accord. Every door needs to be open according to terms that I understand. And this is why every door requires a key. The key that guarantees open doors, all doors, is actually sustaining the presence of the king of glory in praise. And you can sustain the presence of the king of glory around you without the guarantee of a pure heart. And you don't swear deceitfully. You don't lie and swear that I swear I did not steal the money. And you are the one who stole it. And you stole the money, you know. Say, I swear I did not steal it. I swear. No, no, no. You know, you won't be able to sustain, you won't be able to sustain the presence of the king of glory that guarantee open doors. You won't do that. Look at verse 8. Look at verse 8. And the door begin to ask you, who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord what? He's telling the door, the one that I'm bringing to you, I won't praise him. And I won't be able to sustain the protocol that actually keeps the king of glory. That same God is mighty in battle. Who is this king of glory? The Lord. Strong. He's not only strong, but he's mighty in battle. He's mighty in battle. You can contend with the king of glory. Meaning, if you can carry and sustain the presence of the king of glory, nobody can contend with you away. I've said this thing before. Nah, I know, I know, I am not, it's not pride. You can fight me and win. Especially when I'm doing things for God. I've been saying this thing. These are the things I know. As long as my heart is pure towards you, there's nobody I cause in my heart. I try to check daily. Who am I having anything against? I do it. I repent. I, t- I tell my wife most often than none, I'm sorry. Most times. I even apologize for the things I've not done. I do it well. I'm sorry. You know something? People who don't know how to say sorry, they are proud and those will be close against them. I see people who are living below the standard of God for their life. And even if you try to help them, they will fight you. You know why? They don't even know. Far, far lower. Far, far, far lower than the plan of God for their life. They have enough brain and enough capacity to be able to sustain a reality. But they are failing in these things. You can't sustain the presence of the king of glory. Who can actually guarantee all open doors if your heart is not clean. You can't ascend. If you are not operating in loneliness, you can't ascend. If you are swearing deceitfully, they ask you, where are you now? You are, you are in Mabucho. He said, excuse me, I'm close to Ducey. I'm close to Ducey. And when it's time to pray, oh God, let the door be open. No, sir. No, sir. The protocol of every door that must be open, even in praise, requires that you can. Uh, it's a generation that seek the God of Jacob that can command open doors because every door you're about to open will ask you a question Who is this the king of glory? And the king of glory here requires a key because every door needs a key. Every door needs a what? And believe that door, ye everlasting door, and the king of glory shall come in. He said, Who is this king of glory? He said, The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Move to the next verse, verse 9. Verse 9. He said, And he commanded again, Lift up your head, hold ye gate, and believe that door. He, he did the first one, he asked a question. When the door saw that he got the question, most often than known, when you're actually trying to open the door, you try the first time, it's not opening. Adjust the key. He's only asking for more answer. Maybe there is a pain that they caught that has not occurred. I just let the pain enter. This is what happened here. Lift up your head. Oh, you get a beer. You have a last time the king of glory shall come in. But the answer changed this time. To complete the, the, to complete the hole that is, to complete the hole to where they shape the key. 
Look at verse 10. He said, Look at verse 10. He said, Verse 10, the last verse there. Move to the last verse there. Who is this king of glory? He asked again. He said, The Lord of hosts. You know the meaning of the Lord of hosts? You know the meaning of the Lord of hosts? The Lord of hosts simply means the commander of the armies of heaven. The Lord of hosts means was the commander of the armies of heaven. If you hear about, I mean, the reason why people respect America is not because America is in any way useful or anything maybe. But the army, the American army is not something you should play with. One U.S. police can disarm like 300 of our own police. They are trained to be. Go and read, read about how they train one U.S. police. One, just the, the kind of human resource that they use and train one U.S. police. That's what they use and train 300 police in Nigeria. So the delivery cannot be the same. And now think about the best police you can ever think of, the best army you can ever think of. They are still lower to one angel, just one angel. One angel is enough to disarm. Any army you can ever think, forget the ballistic missile, forget the whatever missile, Masonic, they can press one Masonic missile, destroy your country, forget those nonsense. Ordinary flood was what was released in the days of Noah. He cleared your heart. If the Lord in charge of the armies of heaven deploy his forces, the old heart will burn. And this is who we are talking about. The Lord of hosts simply means the, the captain of the armies of the hosts of heaven. So he can deploy. When your heart is clean, your heart is right, you are not swearing deceitfully, you can open any door in praise. Can I say amen to that? Praise guarantee open doors. Can I pray for you? Every door that needs to be opened before January 2024 for you shall be open. Can I pray for someone here? You see, I, I feel fire in my bone. Raw fire. Raw fire. Raw fire. Every door that needs to be opened to you before the end of this year, I command those doors to be opened now in the name of Jesus. Every good door that I've been shot against you from, from whatever time. I stand in the authority of the revelation of this scripture. Of the captain of the host of heaven. The one in charge of the armies of heaven. Every door that needs to be opened to you be opened now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Your season of open doors are here. Amen. You begin to share the testimony of open doors. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jump on your feet right now. The choir take place right now. Let's let's thank God in three minutes. Let's do praise. Let's do the practical in three minutes. The choir get on key right now. The technicals just switch on right now. Let's let's get on key in three minutes. 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 Let's just dance before the Almighty God, exercising these three, the seven points, the seven points, exercising these seven points, exercising these seven points that we have learned. In three minutes, in three minutes. Are we ready now? Are we ready now? Please, let's go. Three minutes, keep to time. Three minutes, keep to time. Receive our praise, O oh Lord. Receive our praise, O oh Lord. Blessings and honor we give out to you. Receive our praise, O oh Lord. Receive our praise, O oh Lord. Receive our praise, oh Lord. What can you do? 